Hello my friends. At a time when the rains gradually decreased and the grasslands of Western Asia turned brown, donkeys loaded with belongings begin to travel west, following the green grasslands into Central and Northern Europe. Herds of livestock follow the careful guidance of nomads on horseback. Trips like these make up a large part of the lives of nomads and their herds. Unlike settled people who view land and water as long-term investments, nomads depend on their livestock and mainly choose species with a productive lifespan of about 10 years, such as goats and sheep. Depending on the region, nomadic herders will choose to raise different species of livestock, including horses that dominate the steppes, camels in the desert, and yaks in the mountains of East Asia. However, sheep and goats form the basis of livestock herds across Eurasia. Iran has one of the world's largest nomadic populations, estimated at around 1.5 million people. Iran's nomads have been making the same migration for centuries and creating distinctive marks. In spring, they head for the cooler pastures of the Zagros. In late fall, they will return to Iran's oil-rich Kustan province. Their herds healthy and well-fed, enough to make it through the cold winters. Nowadays, instead of using horses, some nomads use trucks to bring their livestock to the Iranian highlands near the city of Shelgard to conveniently arrange everything and start their journey. Before dark, this group of nomads found an ideal cliff for shelter. Perhaps they will stay here in the near future. Observing, leading and checking the number of herds, these are all the basic jobs of nomadic livestock herders. Besides herding livestock all day, farmers also have to milk, shave sheep and feed herding dogs. It is not until the sun sets that they can rest properly. All over coastal Turkey, you'll find groups of nomadic herders like this. They carry everything on donkeys, along with their flocks of sheep and goats. When the sun withers the vegetation on the coast, they move to the alpine plateaus and valleys where there is enough food for livestock until the autumn rains regenerate the grasslands on the coast. While the nomads rest, their herding dogs are still protecting the herd. Throughout the journey, nomads must rely on them to ensure safety and reduce the loss of livestock in the herd. More than just their protective role, herding dogs are also great companions. Whether it's the heat in the arid steppes, rain in the forests or snow in the high mountains, herding dogs are still there. Sometimes they blend into the herd like this, following closely behind the livestock or silently monitoring the situation from afar. But when danger threatens, they will immediately send a signal to the nomads. Besides herding dogs, donkeys are great companions. You can see this donkey carries all the belongings of the nomad on its back. It works so hard during its long trips from field to field. This 56-year-old man in the nomadic group said that they started their journey 15 days ago, and they have to travel a distance of around 5 to 10 kilometers every day, depending on the weather and road conditions. They have stayed in this area for a long time due to continuous rain, and their journey has around nine days left. What will happen if they don't have time to migrate to warm areas? When winter comes, things can be very difficult for the nomads. Snow will cover the mountains and their temporary huts. Both nomads, herding dogs and herds of livestock will try to endure the cold. Even walking around the tent was difficult. This lamb has just been born, but was rejected by its mother. It cannot survive in this cold weather without its mother to protect and keep it warm. 
so the nomads are milking the lamb's body and training the mother sheep to lick the baby. They are trying to get the mother sheep to accept and protect the lamb. The young animals will travel on donkeys to the pasture, and nomads will let them get used to the environment and play with the mother sheep. Normally, when night comes, livestock will sleep outside like this. But if the nomads have good conditions, they will build temporary tents to be safer. Dark clouds drifted across the valley, pouring down streaks of grey rain. The nomads are preparing to shield their temporary residence. People who herd at night often prepare dry firewood on the sheep's back like this. They sit next to the fire to boil water and warm themselves. Nomads eat, drink and chat with each other for hours to dispel the cold. At the end of the day, nomads will rest in temporary tents like this. Sometimes they just need a blanket to fight the cold outdoors. In the middle of the night, they need to check several times to promptly detect lurking predators. It is not just the men that work hard. Nomadic women also work very hard. They wake up at dawn, bake bread and prepare breakfast. They also often make yogurt and cheese from sheep's milk. You can see her hands and face are darkened by the sun. And generations of nomadic women have spent their days living on the steppe like this. Their life is not easy at all. Most remaining nomadic tribes have limited access to medical and educational facilities. Dry winds and dust combined with a lack of water for livestock have forced them to travel longer distances during their annual migration from the plains to higher, cooler pastures. Droughts and wildfires caused by heat have destroyed their grazing lands. It seems that the herders are gradually being pushed out of the steppe. Besides this, humans' needs are increasing and maintaining this lifestyle has become more difficult. You see, their children were born in tents and grew up there. But with the development of modern society, children have a need for learning and a stable life. The next generation of nomads are gradually decreasing in number. Still, some nomads are still trying to hang on through their love of the roads and livestock. A Kazakh man said that he had become accustomed to this lifestyle for around 31 years and could not live any other way. Travelling through the mountains, grazing herds of livestock and hearing the bells of the goats is wonderful to him. Nobas have been doing this since they were children and will try to teach this way of life to their children as well. When they feel the fresh breeze of autumn, telling them that the cold days were approaching, the nomads begin to walk to warmer areas with their families, their livestock and all their possessions. They have moved this way across the wild lands for centuries, constantly searching for green pastures and milder weather. Mountains, rivers, plains and deserts were and still are the homeland of nomads and their herds. Hello my friends, on the green fields, chickens stride leisurely, they freely run, forage and sunbathe. This is a familiar scene of free range chicken farms in Europe. In today's video, we'll visit these farms to see how millions of free range chickens are raised. Poultry is the second most produced and consumed meat in the European Union after pork. In particular, it is estimated that about 90% of chickens for meat are raised in housing systems like this in the EU. Chickens drink water from the tap, eat food on a chain, and just stand in place and enjoy everything. But unfortunately, chickens raised this way are not as happy as we think. You see, the cramped space and not being able to move freely can easily cause chickens to become stressed. Although factory farms can control diseases at a very high level, they cannot, however, deny the fact that chickens are kept in poor conditions 
and suffer from heart, skin, lung, and bone problems. To improve the living environment for livestock and provide quality chicken meat to the market, some farmers have chosen to graze chickens in natural environments. The free-range method allows chickens to have at least a few hours a day to engage in their natural behaviours, instead of being locked up in a coop 24-7. This is considered a bright spot in the livestock industry in European countries. He is spreading straw to help keep the chicks warm. They will be cared for in the cage for about the first two weeks of life. This helps to ensure the health of the chickens before they are transferred to the outdoor free-range period. Forget the industrial chickens being kept in cramped cages. At this farm in Spain, you can see pictures of free-range chickens that look like birds, roaming the grasslands and enjoying a happy, natural life. Farmers will cover the area where free-range chickens operate with a layer of fences. While grazing, they will stand nearby to observe and protect the chickens from predators, such as feral cats or coyotes. In case farmers are busy with other work on the farm, the task of protecting free-range chickens will fall to herding dogs. In addition to the main foods of rice, corn, and synthetic bran, free-range chickens will eat anything they find while digging mostly grass and insects in the soil. This also contributes to reducing food costs for farmers. They can spend that money on other jobs on the farm. However, not all free-range chickens have the ability to find good food in the natural environment. Therefore, sometimes farmers will provide pelleted synthetic feed right on the pasture like this, for the free-range chickens to supplement their energy. One of the reasons why free-range chickens are popular is because they get a lot of exercise. Their meat is firm, delicious, and low in fat. Not only that, when free-range chickens are exposed to sunlight, it helps to produce vitamin D and reduces the risk of common diseases in poultry. There is no general rule for raising free-range chickens. Each farmer will have different methods depending on the economic and environmental conditions of their farms. Farmers with more than seven years of experience said that to achieve high efficiency, it is necessary to pay attention to climate control. Besides, reducing stocking density throughout the entire production process can also limit negative impacts on productivity. Let's visit a free-range chicken farm in England. Every day, these free-range chickens spend one-third of their time on the grasslands. Farmers will gather them into barns in the afternoon or during bad weather. Sustainable livestock farming is what free-range chicken farmers in Europe aim for. Therefore, in order for free-range chickens to have a living environment close to nature, farmers will take advantage of land with naturally growing grass like this. Besides preparing a spacious area of land, having a clean water source and safe food are essential. Farmers can also build simple barns for chickens to shelter when needed. A barn model that can be easily moved and open and closed like this is the optimal choice. You may know this, chicken manure has the ability to help keep the soil healthy. But soil receiving large amounts of chicken manure over a long period of time is a different story. This can cause soil pollution. Therefore, farmers need to move the coop to another area so that the chickens can access new food sources and give the soil in the old location time to recover. For fixed barn models like this, some farmers choose to install cameras in the barn to be able to observe the conditions of the chickens extensively. When abnormal signs are detected, the chickens will be taken to a healthcare facility immediately. 
The free-range chicken market is competitive and food safety criteria are very strict. Therefore, raising chickens not only requires patience and hard work, but farmers also have to be creative to develop. Some farmers will take advantage of spoiled agricultural products on the farm, such as roughage, for free-range chickens. This both avoids wasting agricultural products and helps the chickens to have more different food sources. For egg-laying chickens, the average raising period is 18 to 20 weeks, and they can lay eggs for about two to three years. There is an estimated 430 million egg-laying chickens raised across the EU, and they produce nearly 7.5 million tons of eggs each year. At the farm in eastern France, home to about 1,400 free-range chickens, every morning, farmers will visit the barn and start collecting eggs. After checking the quality, these eggs will be taken to food markets and restaurants in the area. Most breeders find that broiler chicken breeds have a relatively quick growth process, with an average rearing time of 35 to 50 days, when free-range chickens reach a weight of 5 to 7 pounds they are sent to the slaughter plant. Here, they are slaughtered using the throat cutting method to ensure the chickens die quickly and without pain. After cleaning the hair and removing the internal organs, workers will process to separate the meat, bones and skin. Finally, free range chickens are packaged and stored in cold conditions to ensure quality. We have just finished our journey to European livestock farms. Here, we can see that properly implementing the process of raising free-range chickens will help improve productivity and economic efficiency, while ensuring product quality for the consumer market.